So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to take a website and make it into a progressive web app using Workbox. Uh, the only thing you guys need today is Node, because Workbox is a Node module. And uh, if you guys already have Node, version 6.11, I think, is the lowest version that you would need, uh, then you're good. And if not, we'll help you guys install Node during the lab portion. Uh, basically, what's going to happen, if you guys have been in the other sessions, uh, I'm going to talk for a little bit about some Workbox concepts, and then you guys will get to try it out for yourselves with a code lab. And then I'll talk again. You guys will code some more. And if we have time at the end, we'll do questions and stuff. Uh, ooh, that's nice. Uh, what, what we're going to do today, or what you guys are going to do today, hopefully, is make an offline capable web app. So I have written a really simple fake news app. And you guys are going to make it so it has an offline home screen, and so that it caches articles as the user visits them, and so that it has an offline uh, 404 and uh, rather a custom offline and a custom 404 page. So let's start with the, the simplest situation, and we'll move to more advanced situations from there. Uh, it, the first and most simple situation is if you have a static site. So that means your assets don't change that much for different users, um, and uh, you're not doing a lot of dynamic like third-party APIs or anything like that. Uh, in that case, I would tell you that pre-caching is a super powerful strategy that you guys should be using. And if you guys aren't familiar with pre-caching, what that is essentially is the, the first time the user visits your device, or sorry, your site, you can pre-cache all of your site's assets on their device. And that way, uh, as they navigate through your app, or if they reload your app at a later time, all of your assets are already locally on the device, and it's really fast. It doesn't have to go to the network, and it will work offline, which would be great if you were stuck somewhere like GDD India and the Wi-Fi was really terrible. <laughs> so let's look, uh, for those that are unfamiliar, how that looks in a, just a basic service worker API. You guys may have seen this in a previous talk. But essentially what we would do, if we had a simple site with some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we would create a version cache. So here I'm specifying a version number. And then I have a list of all of my app's resources. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a listener for an install event. That event fires the first time a user visits your site. And then during that install event, I'm going to open this version cache, or create it if it doesn't exist, and I'm going to put all of those those resources in this list into that cache. This is going to be uh, super cool and great unless you ever change your app, right? So if you make a change to one of your files or you add new files to your site, you're going to have to come back and manually update this list, which is going to get really annoying really quickly. And also, if you have routing of some kind, for example, uh, slash and index.html both serve index.html, but the cache API doesn't know that. So you would have to manage multiple URLs for the same resource. Updating is going to be a pain. And you guys might imagine what I would recommend to you if you run into this problem. Workbox. So like I said earlier, at the simplest level, Workbox is a better way to make service workers. I think of Workbox personally as two parts. The first part is a library that abstracts common patterns so that you would implement yourself in the service worker. And the second part is it allows you to make uh, service workers part of your build process. And let's look at that uh, in a little more detail. So rather than writing a service worker by hand, like I showed you in that first example, what you would do is you would write a source service worker, and then you'd have some kind of configuration file. And Workbox would use that configuration file and take that source service worker and generate a production service worker for you. So for this session, we're going to use Workbox CLI which is just the straight command line version of Workbox. But it's also available uh, in Webpack and Gulp and Grunt and all of the popular build tools. And it's the same exact process. So let's go back to that first example of pre-caching some, some static assets for our site and look at what that would look like with Workbox. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the Workbox library. That's the thing that lets us abstract common patterns. Then we're going to instantiate it. So now the workbox SW variable represents our workbox library and has access to all its methods. And the only method we're going to call for now is the precache method, which takes a, an, a list of files to precache, which is starting to sound really similar to how we had it before. 
But as you'll notice, there's no files in this. So we're actually going to let Workbox generate the files for us. And that way, we don't have to manually update them if we change our app. So to tell Workbox how uh, to, or rather, what files we want to pre-cache, we're going to configure it. And that's going to be done with this configuration file, Workbox CLI config.js. The first few lines of this configuration are just going to tell Workbox where our source service worker file is. That's the one I showed you with the empty pre-cache call. And then where we would like Workbox to output our production service worker file, the file that's going to get built. The next thing we specify is where the files are that we want to pre-cache. So in this case, I'm looking in the build directory for JavaScript, CSS, and data files in the static directory or images in the priority directory. Right, this way, we don't have to manually add files to our list uh, to be pre-cached, but Workbox will actually go into our directory structure and look for them for us. And we can use glob patterns to just map to a whole bunch of files without having to add each one. And the final configuration we're going to have is this templated URL properties, which is going to solve the routing issue that I mentioned earlier. So rather than uh, having to manage a resource URL for each resource in our cache, we can just tell Workbox what URLs map to what resources. So in this case, I'm just saying, hey, Workbox, if the user requests slash, basically they want index.html. Once we run Workbox from our command line or whatever build tool you guys use, you're going to get the output version, the production service worker file. It looks exactly like the, the first file I showed up there, except now the pre-cache call has been populated with our list of URLs. So now this looks really similar to what we had in the first example, except we didn't have to add any of these files in ourselves. So now when we change our app, all we need to do is rebuild it. In addition, we've got this revision property, which is a hash of your files. And what this is going to let Workbox do is intelligently update the cache in the browser. So when your user visits uh, your site, Workbox can use this hash to see what files are outdated and replace them with the newest files. And that way, you don't have to manually keep track of what files the user has and doesn't have, and you don't have to clean out old caches. All right. Now we're going to allegedly start the lab section. Uh, we had planned on having uh, USB drives for everyone, but it seems like those have kind of wandered off throughout the day. Uh, so we're going to try and just uh, clone the lab, I guess, normally. Uh, let me skip to that since we're missing this. Uh, if you go to these lab instructions at this short link uh, in your browser, you'll see the lab instructions, and it will tell you how to uh, clone the repo for the code and then to install Node if you don't have it. I'm going to walk around and, and help you get set up. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, can see that Workbox is, uh, makes updating much easier. Uh, but pre-caching isn't the only thing that you can do uh, with Workbox. And it's not the only strategy that's going to work for you guys. So if you guys have a dynamic application that doesn't just have static resources, right? maybe you're using third-party APIs, or you're serving different content to different users, and you don't know what resources they're going to look at ahead of time, uh, Workbox has built-in caching strategies for runtime caching. And a lot of you guys, if you went past step seven, I think it was, you started to see that there are routes you can establish for runtime caching. So we're going to talk about that now. Uh, Workbox has a lot of strategies built into it. They're kind of self-explanatory, but I'll go through them. So uh, let's just look at this network first strategy. So a network first strategy at a high level would be basically serv the service worker is configured such that it's going to try to get your resource from the network first. And if it can't, then it would grab that resource from the cache. So this uh, should be in the lab. And it would make sense for something like a news app, right, where you want to serve, ideally, the most up-to-date news article that you have. But if you can't, because the user doesn't have network connectivity, then at least you could serve some kind of older article that had been previously cached. And maybe you could put some kind of toast or a modal or something on the screen saying, 
A, you're looking at older content, but at least, at least you have some content to look at. There's also uh, stale while revalidate uh, as another example. Uh, this strategy basically serves from the cache immediately. So, so as soon as something is requested, the service worker returns it from the cache. And then in the background, the service worker goes to the network and gets the newest resource and updates the cache with that. So this would be useful if you have something like a user avatar that doesn't need to be up to date, uh, but you want to serve it really quickly. So it would serve the user avatar right away, lightning fast, and then in the background it would update it. So next time they refresh or next time they navigate through the app, they'll see their newest one. And finally, uh, cache first. We'll look at this in a little more detail, but as you guys can kind of imagine, like network first, this uh, strategy configures the service worker to look in the cache first. And if there's nothing in the cache, then go to the network. So this might be useful for static resources in your site that don't change that much. Maybe you have like an about me page or a contact me page that is pretty much always the same. You might as well just cache that and let the service worker give that to the user right away. We'll look at that in a little more detail for images, which is something uh, you guys could use in like a news app, for example, like the one in the lab. Uh, this is. Uh, the high level code here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna register a route. So that's step seven, I think a lot of you guys has, have done that. But registering a route essentially is you're going to tell the service worker that when uh, this particular resource is requested, I want you to do the following thing. So in, in more detail, we're gonna use the register route method of the service worker uh, router class. And the first argument for this method is basically the pattern that you want to match the route against. So in this case, I'm using a regular expression for anything that ends in PNG. So this is going to basically, anytime I request an image, the service worker is going to see, ah, this is a route for images. I'm going to do the following thing. And the following thing is specified in this second argument. This would be your handler. So here, we're going to just use Workbox's cache first handler as part of the strategies class. And that's going to basically implement the cache first strategy for us. So we don't have to write any logic to say, go to the cache first. And if it's not in the cache, go to the network. You don't have to write any of that. You just throw in service workers built in caching strategy. Further, we can configure the caching strategy. So here we're just doing some simple stuff like creating a name for the cache. This is just going to name the cache whatever you want. But we can also do more powerful stuff like set expiration properties. So in this case, I'm setting a maximum, entry, uh, maximum number of entries as 10. So the service worker will only cache up to 10 PNGs. And any new ones after that will cause the oldest PNG to get cleared out from the cache. And this allows you to make sure you're not overfilling your user's device with uh, resources. So uh, you guys, now you guys can see that you can cache resources dynamically at runtime, for example, images, or in the lab, articles as the user is visiting them, which is super cool. But you can also do this for third-party resources. So uh, Workbox supports cores, uh, which if you guys are unfamiliar, at a high level, uh, browsers implement a single origin policy. And if you guys have ever tried to fetch a cross-origin resource from JavaScript, you'll notice that sometimes you get errors and the browser won't let you do that. That's a security policy. And uh, cores basically allows you to do that if your third party server is configured for it. But a lot of servers still don't have that configured. So we'll look at an example of how uh, Workbox gets around that. So here we're registering a route, just like I showed you with PNGs. But now we're using a third party resource, a font. And this is for Google Fonts, which I imagine implements cores on their servers. But if we pretend they don't, uh, we can uh, look at how that would work. So we're, we're going to use the cache first strategy, just like we did in the PNG example. And we're going to uh, use the configuration properties for the name of the cache and the number of entries, just like I did last time. But now we're also going to set a cacheable response property. And here, we're going to pass in the, res the status codes that we're willing to cache. So 200, of course, is just a regular good response. But zero is the response you would get uh, if you request a cross-origin resource and the server that you're requesting it from is not configured to serve cross-origin resources. So basically, uh, that's a lot of fancy stuff if you don't know about cores. But the moral of the story is uh, you can cache third-party resources with Workbox and serve them in your site. But uh, 
cookie cutter strategies like these, like the drag and drop uh, cache first strategy or network first strategy isn't always going to work for you. You might want more complex logic. Um, and Workbox supports this as well. So this is going to be the hardest slide by far, but basically I'll walk you through it step by step. So what we're doing at a high level is we're going to register another route, just like we did in the previous examples. In this case, we're registering a route for articles in the pages directory. And uh, for the handler, instead of passing in a default handler like workbox.cache first or workbox.network first, we're going to grab the network first handler as a variable, and we're going to configure it just like we've done before. And then what we're going to pass in to our handler for this route is the handle method of that caching strategy. That's the method that actually does the heavy lifting. That's what implements the logic of deciding what to return, whether it's from the cache or the network, et cetera. So for the, the network first strategy that we're using here, it's going to try to go to the network. And uh, if it doesn't have access to the network, it's going to return something from the cache. And if we did get something, we're just going to return it like we normally would. But we've added some additional logic here such that if we don't get a response, so for example, the network first strategy goes to the network, but the user's offline, so then it goes to the cache, but maybe there's nothing in the cache. We're going to say, all right, we don't have a response, so instead we can return our own response. In this case, we're going to grab uh, an offline page from our cache that maybe we pre-cached uh, in the uh, configuration. Uh, and then in addition, we've got a uh, we could check the status and return a 404 page if the uh, user went to a 404 link. So that's uh, basically uh, how you would implement custom logic for a handler. And you guys will get to do that in the lab if you haven't already done that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for, uh, for the rest of the talk. So if you guys want to keep working on the lab, we'll keep walking around and try uh, and help you guys. The instructions are linked here, but if you've already got it loaded up, then you can just keep working from there. <laughs>